Three, two. Ron Arnst is a member of the class of 2020 in the Manitoba Baseball Hall of Fame. Ron, first of all, just how it feels to be a member of the Manitoba Baseball Hall of Fame. There are several emotions that come to the top. Obviously, I'm, I'm honored, I'm thrilled, I'm humbled, I feel unworthy, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, when I think about all the great players and the great teams and the great organizers and I compare myself to them, I always come up short. But I appreciate that the Baseball Hall of Fame committee didn't see it that way. And I thank them for that. And, uh, and I'm just, I'm very honored to, to, uh, to receive this, uh, this acknowledgement and, and uh, become a part of the Manitoba Baseball Hall of Fame. This induction uh, was supposed to happen in June of 2020, uh, but was delayed for two years because of COVID. Talk about the patience yourself and your fellow inductees and the teams have dealt with, just waiting for the green light to say, okay, we're gonna get together in Morton at the Hall of Fame and we're gonna actually do this finally. It's probably easier for me as an individual than it would be for someone who is trying to organize a team and, and I'm sure there were a thousand questions and, and I know that the organizers tried their level best every year to get a date together that would work and you know, you're, you're trying to project the flow of a pandemic and as we very painfully learned over the last two and a half plus years, you can't do that. Uh, even the experts have difficulty uh, doing that with any accuracy. So there were uh, dates set and then dates canceled and moved. And, and I'm sure that if you're trying to organize a team, you know, the, the questions and the frustrations multiplied by the number of people involved in the group. Uh, so uh, I didn't really feel a lot of frustration. Um, I was very patient because I knew what everybody was going through. And um, if I can say so, I knew they weren't going to take it away from me. <laughs> I knew it was going to happen sooner or later. So uh, I just waited for it. And, and uh, the day has now arrived. And as I said, I'm thrilled to be here. Growing up in Saskatchewan, what led you to baseball? That's a very good question. Uh, in Saskatchewan, baseball and fastball, the two main summer pursuits, are divided regionally. Uh, there's a lot of fastball in the more northern, northeastern part of the province, and baseball is in the southern and southwestern part of the province, and I lived in both areas as a child. So uh, I received a grounding in baseball as, as a youngster, eight, nine, ten years old, and then a grounding in fastball uh, after, after we moved further, a little further north, north of Saskatoon. Uh, what led me to it was not only my personal uh, involvement on the field, but uh, as you and most people well know, I'm a radio guy. And my love affair with radio started very young with a transistor that I had in my bedroom. And I listened to it at night. And in Saskatchewan, as, as you can uh, in many places in rural Manitoba, you can get atmospheric skip. So you end up hearing uh, radio stations and radio broadcasts, and in particular, baseball broadcasts. Yes from Denver and Cincinnati and St. Louis and Chicago. And man, that was, uh, that was my thing. I loved that stuff. And through those broadcasts, you heard the stories of baseball. And you heard how the, the announcers uh, of the day would wind a story through a game. And uh, that's just what, what hooked me. Because I've always been, even from a very young age, I've been very interested in stories and storytelling. And, uh, and uh, I just, I mean, that's, uh, you know, that was right down the middle of my personal plate, you know, uh, when it came to baseball. When you started your radio career at CKLQ in Brandon, you had a bird's eye view of the Manitoba Senior Baseball League during its heyday, its golden era. So many great teams, so many great players. I was so fortunate. Uh, when I arrived in Brandon, uh, there were 16 of us uh, on staff at CKLQ uh, just putting that brand new radio station on the air. And uh, of course, we, we were there a couple of weeks ahead of time before we actually turned on the lights, as the saying goes. And um, you, you try to find out as much as you can about the communities you're serving, not, not just Brandon, but the whole surrounding area. And one of the first things I found was this thing called the Manitoba Senior Baseball League. And the more I dug into it, uh, the more attracted I became. It was almost love at first sight. And 
you know, and before you know it, I'm traveling to Macaulay, to Verdon, to Angusville, to Dauphin, to Riverside, to Hamiota, uh, and having a great time doing so. And Souris, and, and you know, I, I don't want to leave anybody out, but I'm sure I've forgotten three or four teams, and I apologize for that. But uh, it was it was my major leagues, it was our major leagues, and uh, I said to our very small news team at the time, I said, we're going to cover it like it's the major leagues. We're going to have schedules and scores every day. You know, we're going to interview the players. We're going to do this the right way. Uh, and we did, and it, and it was great for me because I got to know so many wonderful people. Yeah. And uh, so many of them that were very supportive and very gracious with their time and also taught me a lot. And, and that, uh, that was fantastic. Served with the organizing committee that brought the World Youth Baseball Championship to Brandon in 1991. One of the hugest events in our province in that year. Um, again, I was very fortunate. Uh, Tom Town, the late Tom Town, uh, just passed recently, uh, was the chairman of the committee. And his um, right-hand man, so to speak, was Vic Brown, who was the uh, recreation director in the city of Brandon. I knew both men very well, and they knew me, and uh, uh, they invited me to be part of, of the group. Um, it was a great experience for me. I was thinking about saying it was the single greatest experience of my life, but my, my, my wife may, <laughs> may take exception to that. Um, but it was a great experience because of the people I got to meet, the places I got to go that I would have never gone without this opportunity. Not just Windsor, Ontario to see the 1990 yeah. uh, World Youth uh, Baseball Championships, but to Havana, Cuba to attend a meeting of the International Baseball Congress uh, where we were, uh, where the Brandon bid was finally and formally accepted as uh, being the next host. Uh, and uh, those are memories that uh, I will have with me for a lifetime and I certainly cherish them. Long time and current game day announcer for the American Association's Winnipeg Gold Eyes. How did you get the job? Um, I started uh, when, when Sam Cates bought the uh, Winnipeg Gold Eyes, or uh, pardon me, bought the Rochester Aces in 1994, moved them to Winnipeg and rebranded them as the Gold Eyes. I was excited. Uh, the previous year, Sam and some of his business partners had staged AAA baseball in Winnipeg, and uh, I was in Brandon at the time, and we drove in religiously to watch those games. Calgary Cannons, Edmonton Trappers, those sorts of teams. and. Um, I thought, boy, maybe maybe Winnipeg actually could support pro baseball. Um, I didn't think, no, knowing what I did about the length of the schedule and when it started, playing home games in April in Winnipeg was was not something that I could see happening. So I didn't think AAA would necessarily be uh, a reasonable goal, but pro baseball would be. And now in 1994, suddenly here it was. So I was among the first in line to get my tickets. And I didn't buy season tickets. I bought uh, what uh, they call mini packs, which was a series of selected games. And I, I just bought them season series to series. So I was there like I was a season ticket holder, but I was buying them separately. Uh, and one day in August, John Hindle, who was the general manager of the Gold Eyes that year, came down. And, and John had visited before when I was uh, at the games. And, you know, I was always interested in my take as a fan. What are we doing right? What are we doing wrong? What do you like? What don't you like? That sort of thing. And uh, one day John came and sat down beside me and said, Ron, uh, I recall you used to do some public address announcing. I said, yeah, I did. And I had and the Brandon Wheat Kings, the Brandon Cloverleafs, those sorts of things when I was at the radio station in Brandon. And he said, uh, would you like to do it here? Said, sure. He said, okay, Thursday. This was a Tuesday. <laughs> he said, meet me upstairs Thursday. So I went upstairs Thursday. I sat down behind the microphone and, you know, I haven't left. <laughs> they haven't locked the door on me, so I keep coming back. The fact that we both talk for a living, the comfort level, though, even that first game, sure, there are nerves. But the fact you've done it for back at the, with the Manitoba Senior Baseball League and other events, the comfort level had to be so great for you to just sit in the chair and, and away we go. Yes and no. Um, I uh, am an ad lib talker. Uh, yes, I read newscasts and that sort of thing, so I can read into a microphone as well. This was one of my first experiences at a scripted production where what I said had to fit. 
right? And I'm not just talking about timing, but there are were tone and excitement level and, and those sorts of things. I'm also a baseball traditionalist. So my first couple of games, I was pretty straight down the line. You know, I didn't put a, a lot of inflection into um, uh, who's batting, you know, those announcements, that kind of thing. Um, I, but I did it the way I had always heard it done and the way I thought it ought to be done. Uh, and one day, uh, the uh, game day producer, a gentleman by the name of Kevin Moore, who I owe a lot to, uh, said to me, you need to loosen up. This needs to be a little more exciting. You need to, you need to punch it a little bit. Said, okay, I can do that. And that's, that's when we started to do things like the gold eyes call and, and those sorts of things. And we started to ramp up the excitement level so that I was not exactly a cheerleader, but certainly the goal was to to work up and, and invigorate the crowd, you know, and play to the crowd a little more than what I had been. And, and that's kind of where that started. So you've seen countless Gold Eyes games and, and seen a ton of players. Was there a name that when you first saw went, oh my, I think I better ask somebody about this? Oh, uh, I couldn't tell you uh, the, the number of names. It did lead me, however, to a practice that uh, I hold true to this day. Uh, I get to the ballpark early. If it's a 6.30 start, I'm at the ballpark by no later than 5 o'clock, usually 4.30. One of the things I do is I take the starting lineups, not just uh, the first nine, but everybody, the roster, and I go through them. And I mark the ones that I'm not sure of, and I go to one of two people. I either go to the visiting broadcaster who's coming into town and say, how do I say this guy's name? Or I go to the Gold Eyes broadcaster, whether it was Paul Edmonds or in the early days, Peter Young yes. or now Steve Schuster, and I say, how are you saying this? Because I have a saying, we don't have to be right, we just have to agree, <laughs> right? So as long as we're both saying it the same way, then, then that's fine. So that's how I attack those kinds of names. Um, there are none that really uh, stand out in my memory as being particularly tough. The, uh, the Japanese names are usually tongue twisters, but there are more of the kinds of names that are spelled one way and said another way. You know, those are the ones that'll, that'll throw you for a loop. A highlight from, from all your years. Uh, with the gold eyes, when you look back and can pinpoint one where you said you're watching and uh, wow, this is this is pretty special. I'll preface this by saying one of the great things about baseball that I have found is that you don't know what you're going to see next. I've been doing this with the gold eyes for 28 years, and I've been involved with baseball for a lot longer than that. And it never fails. There has yet to be a season where I don't end up going, wow, I've never seen that happen before. And that's pretty incredible. Uh, so that said, uh, there have been many, many highlights. Um, 1994, uh, first championship. Dan Billardello hit the Grand Slam home run over the mesh monster. And those who attended games at... Uh, the ballpark at what was at that time Canadian Stadiums, uh, just by Polo Park. I know about the left field short porch and the piece of mesh they put up to make it a little more challenging. Bill Ardello hit a home run over top of that. It was a grand slam against Sioux City and won us our first title. And I remember being down on the field and celebrating. Um, I remember uh, Barbero Canizares uh, hitting an extra inning home run against Wichita in Winnipeg. Uh, and I remember the home run because it was dramatic. But what I remember the most about that was looking over to my left from my announcing position and seeing the Gold Eyes play-by-play -play guy, Paul Edmonds, actually jumping up and down with joy as he, as he described the play on the air. And Paul is very emotional and very demonstrative, as, as we all know. And, and that's a great memory for me. I, it never ceases to make me, uh, make me smile. And there have been triple plays, and there have been multiple home run games, and there's been the odd scrap on the field, and you know, um, th there are just so many that uh, singling out yeah. one is not only very difficult, but I, I hesitate to do it because I don't want to, don't want to diminish the others. 
You've conducted countless interviews for the Hall of Fame following in the footsteps of, of the legendary Bob Pickett. It's a thrill for me to, to ask you about your love of baseball and induction into the Hall of Fame. This is pretty surreal, isn't it, this day? It's incredible. Uh, it's incredible that I'm here. Uh, nothing, nothing I had ever expected, anticipated. Uh, it was never a goal. You know, I, I just, it just didn't seem like something that would, would happen to me or should happen to me for that matter. And now here I am. And I'm, I'm, as I said, thrilled, honored, humbled. But I won't fool you. I'm proud. Uh, I'm very glad that, that to be recognized this way and acknowledged this way. And I will continue to try to live up to the standards of those who have preceded me into this, into this Hall of Fame. Uh, it's a great motivation for me. Thank you, Ron. Ron Arnst. Uh, honored member of the class of 2020 and the Manitoba Baseball Hall of Fame.